in the last few months, I've heard some stories about some flight instructors that are doing some things that I'm really disappointed in. Welcome back to the cockpit of the 210 fellow aviators. My name's Matt Farrell and I'm the flying salesman. Got a blast off out of Lufkin, Texas today, headed back to Shreveport downtown. So appreciate you coming along. I'm gonna get everything squared away here in the office and we're gonna blast off out of here on our way to Shreveport downtown. Lufkin Traffic Centurion 604 in the members departing runway seven, Lufkin. Line up on the center line. Come to a complete stop. 30 inches of manifold pressure. Let that turbo lag. Red line, red line. Airspeed alive. Gears coming up. Lufkin traffic, Centurion 604 in November is left turn out, departing a pattern to the northeast. Cleveland traffic, Kurtak 618, left Direct to and activate to Shreveport downtown. Cleveland traffic, Cherokee. A little bit of precipitation there. Runway 16, touch go, Cleveland. Afternoon Cleveland rain traffic, shower. Cleveland 618, turning left downwind. We're making a left downwind departure to the north. 9,000, climbing 2,000, hour clip. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have to go down to maintain our cloud clearance. 20.1, 0, Jill, look at it. Put a comment down below if you know the BFR requirements to remain clear of cloud, what the distances are that you're required to remain clear of clouds. Uh, there's a good acronym that you can use to remember that. We're established in cruise flight. Got about 143 knots indicated. True air speed of 154 knots, ground speed 149. 28 inches of manifold pressure, 2400 RPM. Got 179 degrees on the oil temperature. And I do have the cow flaps cracked a little bit. I want to touch on something that's come to my attention. Since I've started YouTube, I've had a lot of people reach out to me. Made a lot of new acquaintances and met a lot of new people and heard their stories. Here in the last few months, I've heard some stories about some flight instructors that are doing some things that I'm really disappointed in. And I had a young lady reach out to me. Uh, she was wanting to know about scholarships. She was wanting to know about flight instructors in another area of the country because she was trying to learn, trying to get her certificates. And she has over 30 hours of flight time and her flight instructor has not soloed her yet. Now that in and of itself, I don't have, I'm not going to judge the flight instructor on that. I know that flying airplanes and being responsible for the safety of these airplanes uh, is a big responsibility. And there are people who are not cut out to be pilots and, and it may take a hundred hours and you would not feel comfortable soloing uh, a given students. I understand that and that's for each flight instructor to uh, assess their student and make that decision. However, if you get into the 20 to 30 hour range, you need to be having serious conversations with that student about either A, they don't have what it takes and they need to seek a, a hobby or a profession elsewhere, or B, get that student with a different flight instructor so that another flight instructor can evaluate that student. And maybe it's just a bench match. Uh, maybe your teaching style is not conducive for that student to learn. But what was happening in this particular case is this gentleman was taking advantage of the young lady. He was using his position of authority to exert that over and hold it over that, that young lady's head. It's a really sad state of affairs when a grown man is taking advantage of a young woman who is trying to get into this business, trying to learn how to fly, and that is totally unacceptable behavior. So if you're one of those flight instructors out there, if you're one of those pilots out there, that has a holier-than-thou attitude, or maybe your attitude is that, hey, I have control or I can assert my, my position of authority over this person, 
you need to seek out and get a different business. You need to get out of aviation completely because you don't belong in this business. Your attitude in the cockpit does not belong in this business, and I wouldn't want you to be responsible for the safety of any flight with any passengers on board. Uh, anytime you're flying with people and anytime you're flying in airspace with other pilots, we expect you to have your head in the game, to be operating the aircraft in a safe manner, and focusing on what's going on with the aircraft or what's going on with your student while you're instructed, not trying to see down her shirt or do something ridiculous like that. We're professional pilots. Even if you have a private pilot's license, you are responsible for the safety of the people you put in that airplane, and you need to treat this as a profession. You need to treat this as the seriousness and give it the respect that it has. Because if you don't, one day it's going to hurt you, and that's not going to be good for anybody. If you're a student pilot out there, if you're struggling with your flight instructor, I would encourage you to go up and change flight instructors. If you don't want to outright change, just find another flight instructor and say, hey, I'm struggling with this. I'm not making the progress. Can we fly together and you give me a, a objective opinion of where am I at with my skill set and the things that I need to do to progress? Um, through the course of my certificates and my ratings, I've had probably over a dozen different flight instructors. You're not most likely going to finish with the same flight instructor that you started with. And if, if you're at a large school, those flight instructors rotate around, they change, they, they move on to other opportunities. You're going to have a different flight instructor along the way anyway. So don't feel like just because this is your first flight instructor that you cannot change. You absolutely have a say in this matter. You are absolutely in charge with who you fly with. So make sure that if you're flying with somebody, you're comfortable with them. You like their teaching style, and they're helping you progress in your skill set as a pilot. I know that's a little bit of a preaching rant that I went on, but when you have somebody reach out to you who's looking for help, it really just kind of pisses you off that, to find out that there are people out in the world treating other aviators like that, and it's uncalled for. So if you're one of those flight instructors, I'd encourage you to get your act together and start acting like the professionals that we're supposed to be. And if you don't, I hope your career comes to an end pretty quick and you move on to something else. Because I guarantee you that type of attitude, you might get away with it at a small town airport uh, doing uh, flight instruction in your own personal airplane, but you're not going to get away with it in a professional environment. It's not going to work. I'm going to get back to work, pay attention to what's going on in the cockpit. I don't want another approach like I had in the Lufkin there. I wasn't happy with that. But uh, pay attention to what I'm doing here. Enact some of that professionalism that I was talking about. And uh, we'll talk to you when we get a little bit closer to Shreveport. Century Airport, November rear contact 15 miles southwest of the Shreveport Regional Airport. Port November, Roger. And I'd like to request the uh, RNAV GPS to runway 5, please, with radar vector. Port in November, uh, you can expect that and uh, stand by. Commuter 4822, Shreveport approach, uh, turn 5 degrees left vector for the visual approach, runway 14, descend and maintain 2100. Five degrees to the left for runway, uh, visual runway 14, would set and maintain 2100, coming at 4822. So it's a 48 November, uh, turn left hitting 360 vector for the approach and maintain VFR at or above 3000 for now. All right, left 360, VFR at or above 3000 for 604 in November. All right, we got our radar vectors for the RNAV GPS to runway 5. As I mentioned, this is the approach that I was going to shoot the other day. The inbound course is 064. It comes in a little bit of an offset to runway 5. The missed approach is a climbing left turn to 2000. It direct pit B and hold, so it's just a slight left turn to pit B. The minimums are... ASOS is so this is an LNAV approach. We do not have the vertical guidance. It's lateral only. So it's 600 feet above the ground. We're going down to 720 feet. Doom 63 heavy turn left heading to the procedure. Approach. Approach. RNAV GPS runway 5. We're going to do the vectors transition, load approach, and activate. So they want me to go to direct to Fonz at this point. Fonz is the final approach fix, and Fonz is at 2,000 feet. Got the power pulled back to 25 inches of manifold pressure. We're going to let the autopilot fly this, talk you through how I use the autopilot when I'm shooting an approach. That'll also allow me to keep my eyes outside 
and we'll talk a little bit about power settings and air speeds. You will see me dis You will see me disconnect the autopilot. Uh, the autopilot does not like configuration changes, so if I have to add flaps, gear, that sort of thing, uh, I'll be disconnecting the autopilot and re-engaging it. That's one of those things where the guys that are flying Garmin's, the GFC 500 autopilot, I'm told that uh, configuration changes do not phase that autopilot at all. I find that to be pretty interesting, but uh, the S-Tech 55X autopilot that we have in here is a great autopilot. And it served me well for quite a few years. A nice flock of buzzards were going by there. Just maintain three jobs for now. Let's go. Hang out three thousand. Cessna 48 November. Uh, I might have to give you a couple of uh, turns and holding there. I do have aircraft inbound for uh, downtown and for regional right now, so it's going to be a couple minutes unless you want to uh, proceed on navigation. No, hold would be great for 604 November. I need that practice anyway. So uh, you want me to go to your and hold? And uh, Cessna 48 November a firm uh, hold as published at uh, your. Hold as public at your at 3,000 feet for 6048 November. All right, so that's great. Going to go in and basically change our fly the course reversal, yes. And load approach and activate. And that's now 48 November, uh, hold at or above 2,100. And that is at or above 2,100 for 6048 November. Thanks. Commuter 4822, amend altitude, maintain 3,100. Center maintain 3,100, Camino 4822. All right. Rogue 07 heavy, seven miles from the final approach, fixed turn left. Turn on GPS steering. Establish on low quadrant, create ILS runway 15 approach. This is where I'm going to disconnect the autopilot. Sirius 6 Golf Golf uh, traffic lane. Go ahead and put in 10 degrees of flaps. So right now, heavy B52, uh, 1,700. Yes, sir. Got him, up, uh, got him in sight right off the nose, Ralph Golf. Six Golf Golf, uh, that uh, is doing a, the initial pattern there, so it's going to be coming back around. Maintaining visual separation from that traffic, you're clear visual approach, runway 5 into downtown. Maintain visual separation. We're going to go back to heading, five, GPS down, steering, down. and we're going to descend at 500 feet per minute to 2,100. I'm going to set my altitude bug, 2,100, and this is going to be a direct entry into the holding pattern. Right now, I've got about 23 inches of manifold pressure, 133 knots indicated. We'll roll out of that dive, or this descent, at 2,100. We'll see what we got. Three port approach, 307 pop echo, 177, sending one 3,000. We have the weather downtown. Station 307 pop echo, three port approach, uh, expect the visual approach, runway 5, descend and maintain uh, 5,000 for now. 5,000, visual for 5, the pop echo. So as you can see, with GPS steering, Doing a great job flying this course reversal. Delta contact forward center 123.9 or 2. 4392 now for 9 Charlie Delta. 100 feet to go. Slow that descent down. Remember, when you're flying an airplane, none of your control inputs should be perceptible to your passengers. Do everything real nice and smooth, nice and gradual. There's no reason to be abrupt. If you want to go out and you want to crank and bank and have a good time, that's fine. If your passengers want to do that, that's fine. If you're a commercial pilot, that is not the way you're supposed to be flying an airplane. And let me be clear, I'm not the perfect pilot. I'm not going to tell you that I am. But I work, I work at and I study and I train to be a better pilot so that every flight I'm better than I am the last. And that's what I try to share with the viewers. Just these little things that I've learned along the way. Oh, and see I busted my altitude. I was supposed to go to 2,100. Down to 2,000. Get that altitude back. There we go. Can you repeat that handoff for Sirius 349 Charlie Standard Delta? Standard rate turn. Sirius 349 Charlie Delta, not a problem at all. Contact Fort Worth Center on 123.9 uh, or 2, 123.92. 123, not or 2, sorry, thanks. Not a problem, have a great day. See ya. 
Speed are 4892, traffic no factor, clear visual approach, runway 14, contact tower 121.4, have a great day. Clear the visual approach, runway 14, and we'll contact tower 1214, community 4822. Engage that autopilot again. Get my taxi light on just to make it a little more visible being out here doing circles. So I've got 25 inches of manifold pressure, 2400 RPMs, 10 degrees of flaps, and 120 knots indicated. Nice stable speed for the holding pattern. Oh. Got to hit the suspend button on that approach to stay in the holding pattern. I had not done that. And Centurion, uh, 4 8 November, you're uh, three miles from your across your at or above 2100 cleared RNAV runway 5 approach into downtown. All right, 4 8 November, maintain 2100 till established, cleared for the RNAV runway 5 into downtown. Thank you. And that was maintain 2100 till your for 6 0 4 4 8 November, 8 firm. Said that wrong. All right, so now I can unsuspend, and we are direct your. Seven zero Victor, uh, not a problem. So there's I your. Needed to get below the clouds. We're inbound to ponds. We are below the glide slope. So now I want to hit approach and altitude hold. VFR Mooney, that arms the glide slope. We're waiting for that glide slope to come in. Centurion, uh, 4 8 November, if you could keep your speed up, uh, you're number one to the field now. You can contact downtown tower 120.22. You have a great day. Uh, 4 8 November is going to tower. We'll keep it up and have a good one. Downtown tower, Centurion, 6 0 4 8 November, 2.2 miles from Fonz, inbound to RNAV GPS, runway 5. And uh, November, 6 0 4 8 November, downtown tower, runway 5, clear to land. Clear to land, runway 5 for 6 0 4 8 November. All right, that airspeed, or correction, that glide slope is coming in. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect that autopilot. Drop that gear. I'm on glide slope, on course. Just gotta keep easing that power back. Minimums for this approach are 720 feet. 720. Keeping that speed up. Help out the traffic behind me. You'll be able to see it in that front mounted camera shortly how we're coming in at an offset angle. All right, 300 feet to minimums. We got gas, undercarriage, mixture, props, seat belts, shoulder harnesses, cow flaps closed. Downtown Tower, November, citation 3075, Echo inbound full stop. Station 307, Pop Echo, downtown Tower, right number two, Fauna Centurion, about a mile and a half, final runway, file, clear to land. Right number two, traffic flight, clear to land, so Pop Echo. All right, got a citation coming in behind us. Make that first taxiway there if we can. Get out of their way. Order to do Short that. Final runway zero 05. Go ahead and slow her down a little bit more. Go ahead and get 20 degrees of flaps. Power's out. There's 30 degrees of flaps. There's 90 knots. Looking for 80 knots. On glide path. Losing that airspeed. Holding that glide path. There's 80 knots. Bring it in and finish it. Hold it off. Didn't even feel the wheels touch, did you? Appreciate you coming along. Thanks for holding me accountable, and thank you for making me a better pilot. Look forward to seeing you on the next one.